since I last got in front of the camera um, and I actually filmed most of the videos for this vlog um, about a week ago but when I came around to editing it I noticed how miserable I looked um, when I was doing all of the talking bits I did have good reason for being so miserable um, because Lily who is behind me here there she is um, she was actually at Bristol Vet Hospital for 10 days um, you'll have seen in my last two vlogs um, about all of that and yeah so I filmed this vlog as well I filmed the footage as a kind of attempt to keep my mind off of it and I came around to editing it and I just looked so <laughs> miserable so I was like okay I'm gonna have to read all of the talking bits with my face in it because um no one wants to stare at a miserable person anyway so good news is that Lily as you can see is enjoying herself um the vet said she's sort of 90 percent sound she's had three days without treatment on her hock now and it's the swelling is still going down so i'm hoping that we're on top of that which is great news um so i'm gonna do like a, a update on lily um when when we're when we're more out of the woods than we are at the moment but all i matter about is the fact that she's out she's happy um got Bentley over there Lily here and it's a beautiful day so yeah yeah so this vlog that I've wanted to do for a while just decided to pick three of my favorite um exercises groundwork exercises with poles so many people aren't riding at the moment um because of the whole corona thing so actually um or even if you're just riding a bit less um all these exercises on the ground um are a great way of keeping your horses doing something and no Bentley nudging the camera um yeah great way of doing something with your horses it's so good for rehabbing injuries or weaknesses that your horses might have um they're just excellent for a million and one different reasons um and if you've got any questions feel free to drop me a message and um yeah i'll try and answer the best i can but yeah these are just three of my favorite exercises to do with them and bentley is the star of this video so I just want to jump in here quickly and say that um, it's really important to remember that although, yes, I've got a degree in equine sports science, I've worked as an instructor for ages, I've worked as a trainer for ages, um, I've rehabbed a lot of horses with loads of different injuries and issues, and I'm about to qualify as an equine chiropractor, but I have never seen your horse in the flesh. So yes, these are generally quite good exercises for the majority of horses. Um, but if you're at all unsure, please make sure that you ask somebody who has seen your horse in the flesh. So yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Carry on. Which he's very happy about. You're so naughty. So exercise number one. Um, this exercise is very, very straightforward, but be aware that your horse might take a shorter stride or a longer stride um, and that's absolutely fine um, just adjust them for your horse so it's nice and easy for them um, you want to you know when they get really established at this you can try and get them to stretch that stride longer and longer so maybe if you want to make it easier to start with bring the poles a bit closer together and then as they get more established push them further apart um, but yeah we will you'll see in the video how straightforward it is um, and yeah, on we go. On to voiceover me from when I was being miserable last week. <laughs> One other thing to remember is just be wary that um, if you, this is a new exercise, it might be quite difficult for your horse. So don't do too much too soon. You wouldn't go to the gym and do 50 squats if you never get off the sofa. Don't 
expect the same of your horse um, and then build it up over a period of weeks or months um, just don't do too much too soon it can do more damage than good um, and nobody wants that so yeah be careful anyway uh so what you can see here is um i'm actually not using race poles i'm using railway sleepers um they're just easier to work with um you don't need to use these at all you can use a pole which can be propped up on a tire or a block of some description um absolutely fine does exactly the same thing but anyway as you can see here um bentley is very well demonstrating just how much higher he has to lift his legs up just to get over that pole um and what you can actually see as well he's having to really think where those feet go which is what's brilliant for proprioception um which is just a long fancy word for meaning um knowing where his feet are um so it's really good for proprioception and he's having to really lift up those legs um, you see it better in slow motion and, and what you need to look out for is where that arrow is pointing to that those muscles there those abdominal muscles are really having to lift up and he's getting loads of movement through his back so not only are we engaging the core muscles but we're also putting a load of movement into the muscles in the spine as well which is really good for flexibility and building on those muscles um, his shoulders and his hind limb is working really hard as well. You can see those muscles rippling as his leg hits the floor. Those muscles are working so hard to pick those legs up. Um, and it's actually a really similar gait to what you'd get if you took your horse to a water treadmill. Um, obviously, I mean, this is the very close second best behind taking your horse to a water treadmill, basically. Um, and, you know, water treadmills are brilliant, but they're also expensive and there aren't very many of them. So you have to drive quite a long way. So if you haven't got a water treadmill nearby and you want to use one, this exercise is an excellent second best. So these poles are set out with four of my, oh, I call them fairy steps. I don't know. Basically, the length of my feet four times. So you end up walking like a bit of a weirdo um measuring the distance out but so bentley's 14 too but he's got quite a big stride um so i i reckon depending on the size of your horse you're going to go a foot or so smaller than what i'm doing so between each pole there are four of my feet um and yeah go bigger or smaller depending on how your horse moves um and how big your horse is basically so i ho hope that's a good a good guide medium-sized horse um is four feet between four of my feet not the me measurement uh, my size five uk five feet between each pole um we're gonna see him from behind now and this is a really great way of just seeing how much movement you get through the pelvis as well so that pelvis is really shifting up and down um which is improving the flexibility of those muscles um, around that pelvis um, and the balance as well. He's he's really he's really having to work on his balance, um, which is something that makes a huge difference when you're jumping or doing dressage. Um, you've got to have a balanced horse. So this is a great great exercise for balance as well. Um, but yeah, I hope that is. Um, a good this is a good example of some raised poles like i say you don't need to use railway sleepers you can just use poles um and i hope you've from watching bentley you've been able to see just how useful they are and just how much brilliant movement you can get um through using this exercise and, and hopefully you'll try it with your horses and it will help them as much as it's helped mine um so i mean the three kind of things this exercise this works on is core strength it's brilliant for um it's brilliant for flexibility in the shoulders the back the hind limb um, and it's also absolutely excellent for proprioception so he's really having to think about where all his feet are which is improving his balance and coordination as well so as you can see here i've actually just made this exercise a little bit harder and turned the railway sleepers over so they're all a bit higher um and it's just a little progression like as your horse gets better and better at this exercise, you can make it harder by making the poles higher and higher. Um, and as you can see him in slow motion, those muscles are having to work way more. Um, 
so yeah, one other last thing to mention about this exercise is that um, Bentley's doing quite a nice example of it most of the time, but when they're doing this exercise, you want their head to be quite low. Um, at, as you can see here, this sort of real relaxed, um, sort of long, and his, his nose is tucked, you know, turned out. Um, there's no tension in that neck, basically. It's just nice and light. Um, you don't want them hollowing or bracing their neck, so, you know, tucking their chin in or pulling out forward. You just want a nice, soft, balanced, low neck. So it gets a bit high just towards the end there, just as he starts to struggle a little bit more. So if your horse's head comes right up in the air, take it back, make it easier. Um, you know, make the poles lower, push them closer together, um, and give them a little bit more of a chance. So, yeah, there's um, raise poles in walk, and uh, now we go on to another Exercise one. Exercise number two. As as with the ones before, check with somebody that this is okay for your horse. Um, but if it is, um, it's a really great exercise because not only does it um, encourage that flexion um, and that nice high step that engages those core muscles really well like the last one did but actually what it also adds is lateral flexion um, of the spine um, which I might put a diagram in to show what I mean but basically this is so so important for them to be really flexible and strong laterally as well as in a straight line um, because every time you turn a corner on your horse um, that spine has to bend around your inside leg or around that jump off turn or oh hello here he is he's back don't nudge me <laughs> um yeah every, every time you turn a corner your spine what are you doing Bentley? <laughs> anyway every time you turn a corner that spine bends laterally so let's improve its flexibility let's improve its strength so that we don't get um injuries um, and your horses can be stronger and better balanced around those turns basically um like with the other one um although i have used poles not railway sleepers with this one but um make it you know change it around for your horse so i would if it's this horse's first ever time of doing this i definitely wouldn't raise them i would just have them on the floor and wait until they figure everything out um, but then as they get more established you can raise them up higher and higher and, and i like to raise them on the inside um because Bentley, for me, he falls in on the lunge quite a lot. He comes towards me. So raising them on the inside actually keeps him out. But there's no reason if they drift out, then I would raise them on the outside. Or if you're unsure, just raise them both ends and then it's easy. Um, so yeah, raise your poles if you want or raise every other one. You could do that as well. Um, so yeah, raise the poles as the horse gets more established at it. If they find it really easy, that's when you can raise them. Um, and yeah that's about it enjoy this one don't get too dizzy <laughs> but it is a good one for the lateral bending and flexing as well so yeah so here are these poles on a small circle um in walk um it actually really does not matter how you set this up um, in terms of the distance between all the poles because if your horse needs more room it will just move further towards the outside and if it needs to make a shorter stride it will move further towards the inside um, so it's, it's fairly easy um, one thing I would say as well I mean this in this video it will look like I repeat this exercise a million times um, without having any breaks um, but what I really really don't like do, but that's not the case um, what I really really don't like doing it's really not good for them is to work them on this sized circle um, constantly for like 10-15 minutes um, pretty much on average after every three times he's gone through this I take him away and I walk him in a really straight line um, and that's because to work the joints especially the joints in the distal limb the lower leg um but all the muscles as well it's not good to keep them under pressure the whole time um and that constant twisting motion is is quite hard on those joints so yeah between every three or four goes around this circle i ask him to go and just do a, a long loose walk on a straight line um what you can actually see me do here with my hand on his rib cage um i'm actually just trying to, that my hand is basically working as where my inside leg would be just to try and get a little bit more bend through his rib cage 
um, because sometimes he can go a bit straight. So here he's going a bit straight, really. Um, whereas if you just pop your hand where your your leg would go, you can you can encourage a little bit more bend through the rib cage, um, and you're basically just trying to create a uniformed banana shape every single time they go through this circle. Um, so their head is looking to the inside. Um, and the other interesting thing to watch is the inside hind leg. Um, so he is on this rein right leg, and uh, now the left leg. That inside hind leg has to take quite a big step, and it has to come underneath his body. And that is something that is really good if your horse is struggling in a canter transition. Um, in a canter transition, the most important leg is the inside hind leg. That's the one where the power comes from. So if you can encourage that hind leg, inside hind, to be a little bit quicker, a bit more active and work a bit harder, you might find your transition gets a bit easier. Um, as you can see here, I've... Um, raise the poles up on one side and that's just a little progression um so you know as your horse becomes fitter and more accustomed to this um you can raise them as such um or you can raise them every other pole or you can raise them on the outside whatever works for you and your horse basically so yeah that was exercise number two um and on to the third and final exercise so third and final one um same as the other two, if it's something new, if it's something you're not sure of, check with vet, chiro, physio, osseo, whatever, that this exercise is suitable for them. This is something that's quite often prescribed for horses with locking stifles or sacroiliac issues, but only with veterinary and guidance presence. Um, so check, basically. <laughs> Just check um you don't want to make any issues worse but if you've had a history of the, either of those two things and this can be a really really good exercise if you've got the go ahead from somebody but anyway um all you need really simple is a hill um luckily i live in devon which as you can see we have many many hills around here it looks flatter on camera i promise you it's full of hills so that's something i don't struggle with i'm really sorry if you live somewhere really flat and don't have any hills i'm not sure what to suggest but um lots of you can find a hill somewhere in this video it's bentley's first ever time of doing it um i don't know why i've never really added it to his sort of groundwork routine but i have started to include it a lot more now since doing this video um i always recommend it to clients of mine but i need to start doing it with my own more because I was looking at the videos of it and especially the slow-mo videos i was looking at just how many muscles it was working i was like wow this is gonna be so beneficial for bentley um and lily when she comes back into work as well so um yeah i've added it to my routine it's um it's going really well i might do on my instagram maybe like a little comparison like this is the first time this horse has done it and then maybe in a month's time when he's done it a couple of times a week um just to see the difference in if there's any difference of um how we can get him to move but yeah enjoy this one super easy don't need any equipment she's a hill and um rain back up the hill so from this angle directly behind him um it's really clear to see um just how much his pelvis has had to sort of tuck in and um his hind leg brings right underneath him um which is what you want for jumping and any kind of advanced dressage movements you, you need that sort of ability for that pelvis to tuck in so it's a really good exercise for that um you can see he's really struggling to stay straight um and like i've said before this is the first time he's ever done it so we'll forgive him for that but you want him really to go in a completely straight line but there we go uh, here's another angle again he's he's going off to the side but you can correct him i'd quite like his head to be a bit lower um but hopefully the more he does this um the better he'll oh, he just got distracted there um but yeah the more he does this the better he's getting with his head carriage um but yeah i mean i i've i've pushed him back quite quite far up the hill but i i sort of know how fit he is um if he was more if he was unfitter 
then you know I'd only asked for five or six steps before before walking forward and giving him a break. Um, we're gonna see it in slow motion now. And what you've got to really look out for is his tummy muscles, his abdominal muscles. You can see that line really clearly. And watch his lumbar spine as well. Um, he's even he's looking at the camera right now. Um, but the the spine, the 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 bit of his back that is um, just behind where the saddle would go has to rise right up. Um, and those stomach muscles have to really, really engage um, to get those hind legs up the hill. So it's great if you have to get a bit more movement into his lumbar spine. Um, and it's really, really good for um, strengthening up those abdominal muscles as well. Um, the hamstrings are working really, really hard as well. And, and they're getting quite a, quite a big range of motion in there. So that you're getting a big stretch, but also a big contraction. So it's great for horses that need to develop their hamstrings. Um, and yeah, it's just a brilliant exercise. Um, like I say, what I'd like to improve here is his straightness. So maybe next time I'll do it against defense to help him out. And I'd also like his neck to be a bit lower. But um, yeah, like I said, I'll put a sort of like a month's progress on my Instagram of, of how much he's improved once he's done this a few more times. So yeah, give this one a go. It's super easy and um, enjoy. It's so, so beneficial for your horse. So I hope you enjoyed those few exercises that you can do with your horses. Um, hopefully it's it's good in this corona time to add something new, change it around a bit. Um, and yeah, let me know if you've got any questions or if you want any advice and I'll try and answer them best I can. And um, yeah, en enjoy, enjoy your horses and enjoy this beautiful weather. Um, thank you as well to all of the messages of, um, or just the nice messages that I had about when Lily, that's her bum right there, uh, when Lily was really poorly. Um, so yeah, it meant a lot that so many people were so kind and, and were thinking of me at that time and yeah it meant a lot so happy that she's back now <laughs> um but yeah hope you enjoyed this video um if you like it if, if you want more of these kind of videos i've got hundreds of more exercises like this um that i can do so just put in the comments if you liked it and if you want more or if you want me to do anything else or whatever any feedback good or bad i got a thick skin um write it in the comments um subscribe like it give me a little thumbs up and um, makes me happy um so yeah thank you very much for watching and um enjoy have fun